I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Akiba, uh, Akiba Sam, please. Um, good afternoon. Well, good, mo good morning in Vietnam. Uh, I'm so glad that uh, you are here. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank ICANN and other organizers of this very important civil uh, event in Vienna prior to the first meeting of state parties to the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, TPNW. And I'm delighted to share uh, this place with my uh, fellow peace worker, uh, Su Yong Fang from Korea, and also my, um, well, somebody I highly respect, Ambassador Eng Sai Hang, Ergo Sai Hang uh, from Mongolia. Um, I hope that uh, we'll be able to engage in some conversation at a later point. The first point I must uh, start, uh, my brief comment is to point out that uh, Prime Minister Kishida and his cabinet will not be present at the State Party's meeting in Vienna. However, I'd like to also emphasize that the Japanese people, not the government, are well represented um, in this um, event, uh, halls, and also in connection with various activities supporting uh, the ratification of TPNW by Japan, not only by Japan, but all the nuclear weapon states. And, and it is precisely what the meaning of this participation by the people of Japan here that i like to talk about and uh, how we can utilize that enthusiasm, uh, that commitment to change the Japanese government's uh, policies and uh, those of nuclear weapon states. And basically what I'm going to say has been concisely um, put together by my friend and the leader of our de delegation, Mr. Yasunari Fujimoto, in his working paper. But I'd like to add a few uh, points of my own, and also I'd like to be more blunt in stating some of the points which uh, Mr. Fujimoto managed not to do because he's a gentleman. And uh, so let me start with uh, February 24th, when the Russian invasion started. Uh, of Ukraine, of course, two additional invasion itself was quite shocking, as you all experienced. But two additional shocking uh, sets of statesmen came out. One was, of course, President Putin's threat of use of nuclear weapons. That was devastating to the Hibakusha and to many of us in Japan who know. Uh, the living hill right after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And we had to do something about it. So immediately, Hibakusha and I started a, a signature collection campaign via a site, internet site, called change.org. And within a week, we got 50,000 signatures supporting the cause that we should not let Mr. Putin use nuclear weapons. And within a month, the number increased to 100,000. We reached out to Mr. Putin, Mr. Kishida, and also the leaders of nuclear weapon states, urging them to take action so that no nuclear weapons would be used in Ukraine. But the uh, responses were somewhat, somewhat unsatisfactory. Another shocking fact was that many right-wing Japanese politicians started, uh, really started shouting, started coming out of their closets and say, hey, this is the time Japan should possess nuclear weapons. That is the only way Japan could protect itself. Look at Ukraine. Ukraine was attacked because it did not have nuclear weapons, as if the panacea to all the world problems was the position of nuclear weapons. Well, that uh, really did not stand 
very well among many more rational and peace-loving sectors of the Japanese population. Now, instead, what we have been trying to accomplish in that region was so-called the Northeast Asia Nuclear Weapon Free Treaty involving Japan, the Republic of Korea, and DPLK, uh, People's uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea for short, um, who will declare non-position of uh, nuclear weapons, and the surrounding country, China, Russia, and the United States, will guarantee that they will not attack those three core countries with nuclear weapons. That's the substance of the Northeast Asia Nuclear Weapon Free Zone Treaty. That's an ideal uh, direction that many of us have actually pursued, but it did not come to a concrete step you know, toward formalizing this or negotiations toward that really have not started. Now, when you look at some of these facts I mentioned, President Putin's threat to use nuclear weapons, Japanese right-wingers' you know, adamant expression to possess nuclear weapons, and also in general, lack of interest, especially in the Japanese government, in pursuing the North nu uh, Northeast Asia nuclear weapon-free zone. Behind all of this is clearly a cause, and that cause is that the devastation, the, the living hell, the tragedy, you know, human sufferings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have not been understood by these people. And I include Mr. Kishida. Well, I have some questions, but you know, he is the only elected government official from the district where the A-bomb dome is located and where the hypocenter of the 1945 atomic bombing is located. Since he is the only elected official representing that district, that means that he has the responsibility to represent the voices of Hibaksha, not only to the Japanese diet, but also to the entire world, showing what these Hibaksha who suffered there 77 years ago wish the world to do. Their wish is not selfish. Their wish is to make sure that no one else in the world will suffer as they did, which would only guarantee the future survival of the human race. So that is the context in which we all have to talk about uh, what's going on, especially President Putin's uh, irresponsible and callous statement uh, Japanese right-wingers, childish statements that uh, if they possess nuclear weapons, everything will be all right. So, in order to advance this line of thinking, I would like to make a few suggestions. First of all, Japanese government should do more, rather than complaining about that they haven't done much, uh, isn't going to produce much. But I would like to um, point out a few things. In the 1990s, the foreign ministry, together with the Japanese government, um, instituted the program of sending young foreign ministry officials to Hiroshima to talk with the Hibakusha, to learn about the realities of Hibakusha by going to the museum, and by going to, to talk with the experts in the area. And that included the top ranking official from the foreign ministry and the secretary of the ministry. But for some strange reason, as soon as the 21st century came, they abandoned the program. I propose that they reinstitute this learning process unless the Japanese ministry learns the truth about nuclear weapons, about the atomic bombing the world certainly will be less prepared to face that fact. 
One more thing. Since I mentioned Mr. Kishida being the representative of the admin from district, I suggest that he and his cabinet, well, that's less than 20, should visit Hiroshima and talk to the Hiroshima, saw the museum, and talk with students, young people, about death and life and the future of humanity. That's, well, in a sense, nothing. All you need is just one day for 15 or 20 people to visit Hiroshima. And symbolically, that will send a clear message that Japan is finally ready to listen to the Hiroshima and send that voice to the rest of the world so that everybody who is opposed to the T TPNW would start seeing why it is necessary that such a legal uh, framework must be established at this point. It is not too late. In Ukraine, you see war in real time. In 1945, you did not see the atomic bombings in real time. But it's not late. We, can, we have many ways of compensating for that gap in real time in present day technology. And I'm sure the other two participants will add a lot more and different uh, dimensions. And I'm quite happy to return to make uh, some engaging conversations if that becomes possible. So, Thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I learned a lot from your voices. Thank you so much. Okay, so... Go ahead and stand up and say your question, and then once you're done, I'll repeat it very quickly so that everyone online can hear as well. Um, my name is John Kills. I'm from the Scottish Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. Um, I'm a nuclear sector, I'm Scottish, and I'm most English Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, and there was the uh, repercussion. I couldn't hear the question very well. Can, can you repeat it? The question was, how is it possible that, how could the Japanese government reconcile its position on nuclear weapons with the actual impacts that have happened to Japanese people from nuclear weapons? The, um, actually, I have been thinking about the Scottish uh, efforts to be exemplary in terms of a region, uh, geographically Scottish region, you know, have done so well even to uh, call for a referendum to gain independence. And the Japanese situation is similar in that most of the regions in Japan declare themselves nuclear weapon free. Now, however, the, well, perhaps the, the biggest um, difference, well, it might not be the difference that the most countries will actually take a similar position to the Japanese government. But the Japanese government's uh, stance on war and uh, the sufferings that war caused to the Japanese people, that has been uh, prob problematic to say the least. Let me give you a couple of concrete examples. 
you know that the Hibakusha, Hibakusha from 1945, and they suffered medically, and you know they quite often had uh, the living difficulties, and also uh, they also had the, the fear of hereditary uh, effects and uh, many others, uh, discrimination existed and so forth. So obviously they needed uh, help from the Japanese government. Well, you know, perhaps uh, the American government should have come in, but because of the, the legal complexity, the Japanese government was to take care of the Japanese hibakusha in many, many ways. But in 1980, the government asked a body of scholars including the past presidents of the uh, University of Tokyo, that's the top university in Japan. Uh, two ex-presidents uh, are included in the seven-person panel to answer the question about how to deal with the, the Hibakusha's difficulty. The conclusion was, to, to put it simply, the country starts the war. And, the, and because it's a war, the entire nation is involved. And of course, there will be victims. However, it is a national war. All the Japanese people will have to bear the consequences. All the sacrifices will have to be borne by the people. Okay, so the, worst, the country starts the war. You know, however, it's the, the people you know, that suffer and that really have to accept the, all the ills of war. Okay, that's one. Ah, okay, one, one more. In connection with the war in Ukraine, that uh, the Russian ambassador in Japan stated on, on TV program that, you know, just when I asked about uh, the Russian tanks and other uh, airplanes and, and so forth, attacking hospitals, schools, and uh, civil homes and citizens. And uh, Russian ambassador Galuzin said that, no, 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 no that uh, Ukraine turned all hospitals, schools, and ordinary houses into factories. So we are not attacking civil buildings, we are attacking ammunition buildings, factories, military facilities, and try to get away with it. Well, then many Japanese thought about what happened on March 10, 1945, when 100,000 people were killed by the fire raid, um, which was commanded by Curtis Lumet. And uh, he was later awarded the highest uh, decor decoration from the Japanese government in 1964. But in his memoir, he stated that what I killed, 100,000 people in Japan, were not civilians in Japanese houses. Small houses had one house had was building walls. The other one was creating screws. Another one was creating hammers. So all these houses in Tokyo, in total 100,000 people, were war factories. And we did not kill civilians. OK, so that's basically the Japanese government's attitude toward war and the sacrifices that people will have to, well, I don't know the, the word to properly describe it, but it endure the sufferings that the government really has no business in taking care of. So that's the Japanese government policy. That applies to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and all other atrocities caused by war. And the unfortunate thing is the people who remember such things and remember the irresponsibility of the national government uh, is decreasing. And so at the current moment, many younger generations think it's a good idea for the Japanese government to possess nuclear weapons because that would protect uh, Japan from being nuclear attack from neighboring countries. So that's, if that, that sort of gives you some hint of it. Thank you, thank you very much. And, uh, okay.
trying to get me to be Sakika. And so, uh, this time it's over, so we just did uh, quote into remarks. And so sorry for the, uh, we could have one question, so we, we can have discussion after this session. So, uh, uh, so really, uh, as us and then also Ms. Akiva. And really, uh, this closing remarks that uh, Indian Dabi has had the efforts uh, of Hiroshima people, uh, Hibakusha people. So. There are also efforts by countries that do not have nuclear weapons. It is important for NGOs and uh, each and uh, every country to take the initiative to uplift nuclear weapons. There are nuclear weapons free zones all over the world. The Mongolia experience has, uh, uh, has, told, has told us that uh, their theory and uh, the efforts of forced government and the citizens in order to make uh, those eight year and nuclear weapons results. Uh, it is necessary for each country to work trust really, uh, trust the uh, excuse me, not so that you recur, but it is necessary for each country to work together in solidarity. However, in order this to do so, there must be a relationship of trust between countries. To take the example of Japan, Japan must consider and reflect on the uh, World War II and show a willingness to cooperate with the countries of Northeast Asia. In the global balances of power, the assembly of nuclear weapons and uh, nuclear deterrence has been uh, maintained until now. But we are witnessed the situation in Ukraine and uh, faced a big question of whether we must continue to live in fear that nuclear weapons uh, might be used. First meeting uh, state bodies is a historical turning point for nuclear aviation and the aviation of war. It is possible for citizens of the world to have solidarity with each other with region each other to have discussions. Let's take action for peace together. Thank you all to participate in this session and please give a big hand to all speakers. Thank you so much. So if you all uh, interested in the Korean uh, action, please take your pictures and uh, sign for these papers. Thank you.